I want to show you a picture tonight. You're going to see it on the cover of Life magazine next week. It's the same beautiful woman, beautiful but changed by 48 years. The article in the magazine is all about a subject we decided to explore last year. The race to find some scientific breakthrough that will stop aging in its tracks. As of now, our genes and cells seem programmed to sign off at about 110 years, 120 maximum. Though genetic scientists have already doubled the life of the fruit fly, for humans it's still pretty far away, if at all. So we did a kind of survey of what's just around the corner. What might make Robert Browning a prophet for saying, grow old with me, the best is yet to be. Paul Spangler is running his fourth mile of the day, uphill, downhill. He's in training for the New York Marathon. After mile eight, he's a little out of breath. But then Paul Spangler is 92 years old. How come you do me like you do, do, do? How come you do me like you do? During the week, Sadie Kolar plays two or three sets a night in New Orleans clubs and hotels. That's eight to midnight. Baby, as you do, as you dust the dust. She makes her way home and then gets up at six to walk to the market to do the shopping. Welcome to the gay 90s, Sadie's style. And in this studio, a prolific potter works eight hours a day on pieces that sell for up to $30,000. After a long struggle, business is now booming for Beatrice Wood, who this year... Happy birthday to you. Turn 98. When people ask me how I happen to live such a long time, because I'm really very old, 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 my reply is chocolate and young men, and that solves it. <laughs> Beatrice, Sadie, Paul, they may seem like fortune's children, blessed in their old age, but here's a headline for you. Scientists are now convinced that in the next two decades, the 90s are going to be like that for a whole lot of us. It's going to feel like the back end of middle age. Because every month in laboratories around the country, scientists are making startling discoveries, breaking open the old myths about the aging body and the mind. Right now, I think the tremendous excitement is in the aging brain. Dr. Ed Schneider is the head of the Andrus Gerontology Center at USC, one of a dozen places feverishly working with different chemicals to keep the brain vital. One of the things that we have found is that the old myth that as we age, we lose brain cells and that we cannot stop this phenomenon may be wrong. May be wrong? May be wrong. That we may be able to take tired, weary, aged, damaged brain cells. Yes, please. <laughs> and sprinkle some substances, one of them called nerve growth factor, and these cells will wake up, feel terrific, and function well. Here's what they're doing at USC. Scientists have isolated rat brain cells damaged by disease. They then added a natural body chemical called nerve growth factor, a chemical essential to normal brain development, and they saw incredible results. New connections were made. Fewer cells were dying. As for the rat, brain-damaged rats without nerve growth factor can't find their food in a maze, while rats with nerve growth factor have no problem. Human tests have already begun, and a breakthrough could be as soon as 10 years away. So you're saying by the early 21st century, people will start taking pills to change their brain chemistry? I think so. I think, as today, many people are taking uh, their multivitamin pill in the morning, and people with specific diseases take other pills, we'll be taking uh, pills that will allow us to age more successfully. And there may be a pill that will allow us to have the same brain power at age 90. It'd be wonderful that we had it at age 20. When I first took the pill, to my great amazement, within hours I was feeling better, and the next day I was back to my normal state of health. In Toronto, Dr. Morton Schulman says the magic pill is here now. It's another chemical for the brain called Depronil. Schulman took Depronil for the brain disease Parkinson's and after a dramatic reversal of his symptoms, bought the Canadian rights to the drug because he's convinced it can do wonders for healthy humans too. And Schulman sent us to the lab where he's funding his own research. Here, scientists put an old rat, the equivalent of an 85-year-old human, in a water maze. 
Even though the rat has been shown where the platform is, he can't find it on his own. He's more interested in trying to get out. But when an old rat is given Depronil, it can find the platform at the same rate as this young rat. Good afternoon, Depronel Research. But back at Schulman's office, his staff has seen all the research they need to see. They're all taking Depronil now, even though it's only been approved in the U.S. and Canada for Parkinson's patients. Sure, I'm a Depronil user. That's right. If it can help me live a few years longer to enjoy life, then why not do it? As for evidence of increased, well, friskiness, Actually, I have seen a change in my sex drive. The woman that I'm going out with has a complaint on occasion that I'm too active. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Let's be very clear about this. There is absolutely no proof that Depronil does anything for healthy humans. And what works in animals doesn't always translate to people. Not only that, doctors will tell you if you're healthy, to take a pill on a gamble is crazy. At the same time, there is going to be some chemical compound some breakthrough pill and it's right on the horizon. A pill that will help a lot of people keep their brains as young and agile as 98-year-old Beatrice Wood. Oh, that is so seductive. Beatrice doesn't have to wait for a pill. She does it with her spirit. Did you ever worry about how long you would live? Did it ever matter to you? No. Very often when I'm very exhausted, I think, oh, no, this is it. One more breath and I'll be gone. And then my revolting mind says, yes, but you wanted to do that part. And you wanted to make that shape. And before I know it, my mind has brought me back to life. It's as if Beatrice wills herself into eternal youth. Just look at her pottery. She produces 50 to 60 pieces a year. Sadie Kolar isn't waiting for science to come up with a pill either. She was 20 when she started playing piano on Mississippi River boats. And the work still keeps her brain supple, especially her memory. I learned all the new songs, play with all the bands in New Orleans, every band you can call. You just pick them up by ear? Yeah. I hear something, I can play it. Now, as long as I know what key's written in, right. I'll play it. Do it, my good. Sadie is living proof that, contrary to what everybody thinks, memory doesn't have to collapse in old age. like I make it. In fact, only 1% of people under age 75 get Alzheimer's. Most of the news about memory is good. It turns out a lot of memory loss has less to do with age than with depression, other illnesses, side effects of pills you're taking, lack of confidence, and that's something you can reverse with a little practice. Hi, I'm Ruth. Look what happened at the Memory Assessment Clinic in Bethesda, Maryland, Hi, with a 66-year-old man who could only remember one out of 14 names on a test. He practiced taking a face. Hi, I'm Anne and associating it with imagery. And after just one week... I'm from Cincinnati. Philip. He was scoring 12 out of 14. That's exactly the same as his 35-year-old daughter. Philadelphia. Elizabeth. After dark when everything is still and the moon comes creeping o'er the hill. Paul Spangler says he has trouble remembering the new songs he learns with his barbershop quartet, but by his own admission, he's not really practicing that. He spends his time, you remember, staying physically fit. He is a retired doctor. He was a surgeon at Pearl Harbor who decided to increase his exercise dramatically, later than you'd think. How old were you? 67. You didn't really start to take care of yourself until you didn't were 67. Care. I wasn't. I was, well, I was having a good time, but I was overweight and, and not physically fit. I was physically active, but not physically fit. Never had been. Our experience has been that there's really no age at which you cannot make people stronger. Scientist Maria Fiateroni is conducting the first strength training test on people in their 80s and 90s at the Hebrew Rehabilitation Center outside Boston. What she learned, even about people who have had strokes and heart attacks, defies the common logic. 
Are you flirting, Philip? Why not? Dr. Fiataroni has discovered that a one-hour workout three times a week can increase a 90-year-old muscle 10% in a matter of months. Which is quite dramatic, and that's about what you'd see in a 20-year-old, for example, who was doing weight training. And there's another key area of research into what and how much you eat. Roy Walford doesn't believe it's propaganda. He's the dean of diet research, and these are his mighty mice, equal to 90-year-old humans. But they've had their calories restricted to almost half their normal diet, and the result? Their lifespan increased by almost 50 percent, and they had a lot less disease. We asked Dr. Walford to compare a restricted mouse to a fully fed one. You can tell a, a great difference if I hold them up together. This is the restricted one. Look how gray uh, this guy is. This one is very gray. He's got material from the cage stuck to his rear end. He doesn't groom himself very well. His hind legs are not functional, and yet these are the same chronologic age. If I just stroke them, you can see which one is the more vigorous. He's convinced it's no accident that the humans with the longest lifespan are the ones who naturally eat a low-calorie, high-nutrient diet namely the people of the island of Okinawa in Japan. The Okinawans have the highest percentage of people over 100 of any culture in the world. Wolford also says that calorie restriction not only works in mice, but in other species like fish, cattle, monkeys. And he believes it will work in people, too. If this applies exactly to humans, it means by this technique, humans could live to be 150 to 170. You are convinced that humans can live routinely to 150 to 170? Not on an individual basis, but the survival curve of the human population, which generally terminates, goes along like this, and then gradually terminates and comes to zero at 110, which is the genetic maximum lifespan limit to our species normally. This curve can be extended, not ending here, but ending out here at, say, 150. Yes, I'm convinced of that. What a fool I used to be. Whether he's right remains to be seen, but one thing is already certain. In the future, for more and more people, the 90s will be as vital and creative as middle age. The 90s could be the best years of your life. What age would you like to be in the hereafter? Well, I've had so much fun in this age, I don't think I'd mind being in this age. I know that I'm almost 100 to you, but I'm really only 32 to myself. So I refuse to grow up. <laughs> What's the best time of your life? Well, I tell you, I've been having the best time of my life ever since I've been born. <laughs> Don't get around much anymore. Thank you.